So I have all these great ideas and plans for my future and things that I want to accomplish, but unfortunately, most of them never leave the drawing board. Why? Well, to be honest, it's because I'm afraid if I try, I'll fail. How will I look if I fail? And what will people think of me? And no, if I can't do it perfectly, I don't want to do it at all. So I make up all these excuses for why I should wait to start and procrastination ends up sabotaging any progress that I might have had as I think to myself, mm, I'm just too busy. But if I can only set something aside and begin, but the moment I take a step in the right direction, crippling fear of my imperfections reminds me, you don't need to step out. You're good right where you're at. Perfectionism will stop us in our tracks and keep us from trying because we fear rejection. So if we never put ourselves out there, our flaws and weaknesses can't be discovered, right? And it's scary doing something that people are gonna critique. If you had any idea how many times I have to force myself to press record, you would definitely see the deep grip that this type of mindset or a stronghold can have. And if it's left unchecked in my life, it would definitely rise right back up and start dictating my day and my life. Hi, I'm Catherine, and today we're covering a topic that I have battled with since I can remember, perfectionism. I'm a personal development life coach certified in mental health, and it's my mission to help women uncover the lies of the enemy and discover who they were created to be and live whole, healed, and healthy inside out. I don't believe the term healthy means only our external. I believe what goes on inside of us has great effect on the external, and if we address the internal, then we can see true transformative change. So today I'm gonna to be sharing my struggles with overcoming a perfectionism mindset and giving you some food for thought about how it affects everything we do, but not just our productivity, how it can also affect our mental health. And I'm going to be giving you a strategy for breaking free from this mental stronghold so that you can move forward in peace. So perfectionism creates anxiety. Feeling the need to do it all and do it all perfectly creates a great amount of anxiety. Anxiety tries to stop me in my tracks every time I begin to speak my heart or even as I write out my blog posts on my blog. I battle an undercurrent threatening to take me out to sea every time I sit down. And to be honest, there are days that it does drag me under and I don't get anything accomplished. I end up wasting the whole day or even weeks saying, no, I can't do this or I can't do that or worrying about what others might think. But I have to shut off those thoughts and remind myself that God has called this out in me and I have to allow him to perfect it in me and it's not up to me. So something I've had to really learn is to do your best and leave the rest. There's nothing wrong with trying hard and putting your best foot forward. As Christians, I believe that we are to strive for excellence, but excellence isn't perfect. Harriet Bryker said, striving for excellence motivates you, but striving for perfectionism is demoralizing. Putting in the effort it takes to become an Olympic athlete or a great author or a successful business owner or a parent is great. I don't believe that we should stop trying to do well and set goals and reach for them, but I'm only suggesting that we change our position in the vehicle of life to let Jesus be the driver and release our white knuckled grip of worry from the steering wheel and just take a load off. Take the weight off of having to do it all and be it all. Because when you feel the need to perform all day long, it's exhausting. And if you trip and fall, Jesus is there with his hand extended, ready to lift you right back up. He's never gonna kick you while you're down or exploit your weaknesses. And if we give control to God and trust him, he will take care of the details and make them all look super awesome. Perfectionism is prideful. Matthew 23, 12 says, those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Pride says that we can do it all on our own. And it's when we do it all by ourselves and rely on our own abilities, we're placing ourselves on the throne. Yeah, we might accomplish what we set out to do, but what more could we have done if we had just asked for the Father's help and allowed him some room in our life? I really have to remind myself of this daily. Like, I can't do anything apart from him. He knows my battles, my addictions, my shortcomings, my faults. And if I could do it all so wonderfully, then what did Jesus come for? <laughs> Philippians 2 says this of Jesus, who being in very nature God, 
did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by being obedient to death, even to death on a cross. He sacrificed his life as a payment for our imperfections, and he came to cover our sins and shortcomings with the power of his blood. So then how can we be free from this desire to perform and do it all without a mistake? By understanding the grace that's extended to you as a son or daughter of the king of kings who chose you. When you receive Jesus, you receive his covering over every flawed and imperfect area of your life. Y'all, this revelation was incredibly freeing. <laughs> you can be free from perfectionism when you get off this stage of your life and put Jesus in the spotlight. When you focus on him and get your eyes off yourself and renounce any agreements that you've made to measure up for the sake of someone else. And perfectionism is a lie. So thinking that we can do it all perfectly on our own is a lie from the devil. Maybe you've had parents or teachers, mentors, friends, or even a boss that's caused you to feel as though you had to be perfect to gain their approval and never make a mistake because if you did, man, you were going to feel the wrath of all the embarrassment and judgment that they could throw your way. And I come from a large family. There were eight children and I was the second in line and the oldest girl. So I was expected to perform. I had to be the example and do really well in everything that I did. You should have known better was something that I heard often for any little mistake that I ever made. Even when I didn't know better, the foundation of lies was laid for me to build on. So I began holding myself to this standard. I beat myself up anytime I made a mistake. If I walked into my room and it was just a little bit messy, in my mind, I would say, you're such a slob. And I'd just begin loathing myself for every shortcoming. Like, why couldn't I be neater? prettier, skinnier, smarter, stronger, faster, more of this or less of that. I fell short and the devil reminded me of that really often. However, I finally started to recognize the lies I believed about myself once I began to follow Jesus and surround myself with uplifting and positive people who accepted me for me, flaws and all. I finally accepted how unconditionally loved I am by the creator of the universe and truth healed the wounds of the past. So I chose to be the best me that I could be and I asked God to help me handle the rest. When I mess up, I'm reminded that I'm covered in his blood and that it's not the end of the world when I fail. And when you fail, because failure is part of learning, grace has definitely got you covered. So here are some action steps that you can take to break off perfectionism mindset and get moving on those goals. First, make a list of five things that you would do if you knew you couldn't fail. Secondly, ask God to highlight those that he's put for you to do and ask him to help you do them. With his help, you're not going to fail. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be any obstacles to overcome, but it does mean that he's going to be there to help you every step of the way. And thirdly, take some deep breaths, release your preconceived ideas about whatever it is God has given you to do and take his hand because he's definitely going to guide you. So that's my best advice for uncovering and dealing with the perfectionism mindset in your life. I hope this has been helpful for you today and I thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you want more healthy from the inside out content, visit my blog and don't forget to get my new book, Behind Enemy Lies Today, for more of my story and tips to uncover the lies that we believe about ourselves and discover the truth of who we were created to be. Right now, you can get the first three chapters for free by visiting my website and I'll put a link to those in the description below so that you can find them and I will see you guys here next time.